Welcome to StackAware's DIY AI Risk Assessment Guide. I'm Walter Haydock, and I'm going to be walking you through the process that I use with StackAware clients to help them map, measure, and manage their AI-related cybersecurity, compliance, and privacy risk in 30 days. This is primarily targeted at security leaders who are working at companies that are leveraging AI to help support healthcare, financial services, and large enterprise customers. So that's who I'm speaking to today. If you don't meet that description, you're welcome to tag along, but that's my target audience. So let's dive in. All right. So just to tee up what we're talking about here, I've got two headlines from some news earlier in the year suggesting that both Amazon and Samsung were burned by a phenomenon that I call unintended training when some of their employees may have accidentally provided some sensitive information to ChatGPT while it was in its default training mode and potentially made that information available to other parties. So obviously a bad situation there that resulted from relatively ungoverned use of a new tool. There are some other issues as well that are cropping up when it comes to vendors integrating AI into their products. And then also on the regulatory and privacy side, there are new challenges when it comes to AI involving sensitive data generation and potentially mitigating that through techniques like machine unlearning. So I think there's a lot to discuss here and we're going to be talking through some considerations, how to attack these challenges and improve your company's risk posture. All right, so I already told you what we're gonna cover. I'm gonna start with some case studies here. First of all, the company that I worked with most recently is called Encore. They help financial services giants process data, minimize manual tasks, and they are an AI first company themselves. So. It was a great opportunity to work with a leader in this space and help them map and identify some of their key risks. And as you can see, the, the CISO thought that the engagement was quite worthwhile and they had a variety of different tools that they needed to work with and help understand the risk implications of. Another company that we have worked with is called Reputation. They are primarily focused on helping other organizations manage and understand their online reputation and perception in the face of their customers. So they ingest a lot of structured and unstructured data, which makes them a prime candidate to roll out AI technologies. But with that said, there are lots of concerns with respect to privacy, and they also had to maintain both SOC 2 and ISO 27001 compliance attestations and certifications respectively. So we worked with the security and privacy teams there to get them a comprehensive picture of their risk and set them up for success while still being able to leverage the productivity advantages of AI. And then our third case study here is with a company called Cobalt Robotics. They help Larger enterprises manage their physical security by deploying autonomous robots into their offices and facilities. So AI is a key part of the Cobalt use case and making sure that they were leveraging it as efficiently, effectively, and securely as possible was a key deliverable for the engagement. We worked with the VP of engineering, Dennis, and we helped map out a key set of challenges and propose some remediations for them that help set them up for success in their enterprise sales processes. All right, so to just to be clear on, again, who I'm targeting, this is not really meant for folks who are uninitiated in the world of AI and cybersecurity. It's also not meant for those who are content with just checking boxes because the goal of this training is to get beyond merely the paper engineering aspect of things and really into identification and mitigation of risk. So if you're a forward thinking security professional who understands that the ground is shifting underneath you and that you need to evolve your tactics and approaches, then this is the right place. 
And then also if you've dealt with traditional security consultants who kind of just swoop in and then dump a 50 page PDF on you at the end and you aren't super happy with that, then this is also a good place to be. All right, so if you wanna know a little bit more about me, again, I am Walter Haydock. I am the founder and CEO of StackAware. Prior to launching my own company, I worked at a data governance startup called Privacera. Some of the publicly uh, identifiable customers that we helped were Nike, Autodesk, and Corning. And that really gave me a good idea of the importance of safeguarding information for really large enterprises. And before that, I ran product security for the Internet of Things product lines at a company called PTC, which did over $100 million in revenue. And in that capacity, I helped support big companies like Caterpillar, Volvo, and FlowServe secure their connected systems. Prior to that, I graduated from Harvard Business School from the MBA program and then spent most of my career on the early side in government, working on Capitol Hill in the intelligence community and as a Marine Corps reconnaissance and intelligence officer. So that's a little bit more about me. And really the key motivator for me going out on my own was seeing how companies were managing risk in the status quo approach, which relied on a lot of expensive tools and complex frameworks that kind of missed some of the obvious risks. So I saw a big opportunity there with the explosion of AI over the past year plus, there has been an increasing threat surface for a lot of organizations, definitely a lot of opportunity at the same time. And I want to help organizations leverage AI effectively while still doing so responsibly and securely. And if you want to learn more about me and how I think and how I tackle this problem, follow me on LinkedIn, subscribe to my newsletter, and check out some other information products that Stackware makes available. All right, without further ado, I'm going to dive into the Innovation Shield process. And this is the AI risk audit that I do for all of Stackware's customers. And I'm going to walk you through the steps in this training right now. All right, so first of all, you need to collect information. The business objectives of your company are what should be driving your risk management efforts. So understanding, is it important to gain or maintain a SOC 2 at a station? Does the marketing team need to process a lot of data? Is engineering using coding co-pilots? Are customers worried about AI-related data privacy? Is the business expanding into new regions, especially the European Union with the general data protection regulation? These are all important questions to understand because otherwise you might be making recommendations that don't necessarily suit the business needs. And that is a surefire way to become irrelevant as a security professional. So once you've answered that, then the next step is to take a look at your existing security posture from an external perspective. So look at your privacy policies, your terms of use, trust center, if you have one already. Uh, hopefully if you have a vulnerability disclosure program for receiving reports from ethical hackers and security researchers. So understand what those are saying, make sure they're consistent with your use of AI and processing of customer and other people's data. All right, next step is to delve a little more into your own perimeter and environment and do a first party risk analysis. So with this, take a look at your proprietary code, your policies, your procedures, your governance of your company's use of AI. Some important questions to ask are, do you have a process for someone requesting a new AI tool or any tool for that matter? If it's always kind of a one-off uh, approach, then you might want to consider building a standard operating procedure. I've got a template for that if you're interested or you can build your own. Does your data classification policy make any sense? I've seen lots of organizations with very complex ones that they don't really use on a day-to-day -day basis. So if your policy is just a paper tiger, it's gonna make it very difficult for people to understand what data they can provide to which AI tools. And then if you're training your own models internally, understand what sorts of data they are being trained on. And then especially if you're using other uh, models to generate that training data that has the potential to 
create some licensing concerns. So definitely do a, a thorough analysis of, of all these things. These are just a couple examples of what you're going to need to worry about. There are several hundred more that I go over for my AI risk assessment customers, but this should give you a taste. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. Third-party risk is a huge issue in cybersecurity in general because it's very difficult to just run apps and a business without relying on some sort of third party, whether it's open source, uh, a paid vendor, or some combination thereof, which is most common, you're going to need to rely on other people. So having a comprehensive framework for how you do that is really critical. I've got a ton of resources that I've listed here in terms of giving you an idea of how to vet vendors, how to understand the various risk and threat models associated with different deployment models, whether they are infrastructure as a service, software as a service, true on-premises. There's a ton of information here, so I recommend you dive in. All right, so after you look at your third-party risk, you're going to need to take a look at your fourth-party risk. So you're not the only organization that is racing to roll out AI tools. Folks like Databricks, Asana, and Zoom are all adding AI features to their products. So you want to take a close look at their terms and conditions and how they process, train on, and retain your data. So just diving into the example of Asana here, as you can see, if you use the Asana intelligence feature, you are potentially going to be sharing your task titles and task descriptions with AI partners like OpenAI and Anthropic. Now, that's not necessarily wrong. It's just something to be aware of and understanding the terms and conditions associated with the tools that you're already probably using and how they use AI is going to be very important. I'll give you another example that's a little more vague, and this is from Databricks Assistant, which is essentially a Copilot-esque tool for that vendor. And it says they may use third-party services, including Azure OpenAI, and they talk a lot about Azure OpenAI's data privacy and security features, but it's possible that they're also using other vendors aside from Azure OpenAI, as they state here. And this doesn't really get too in-depth about how data is retained and processed using those other third-party services. So definitely something to think about. And then uh, my third example here is for Zoom, and they're doing all sorts of stuff with your data using open source models. They're building their own one. They're using OpenAI and Anthropic. So this can get really complex very quickly, and this is just one example, or this is just a series of examples that show how difficult it can be to manage fourth-party risk. All right, so hopping back into the document, now that we're done with fourth-party risk, the next step, which is optional but recommended if you're going to get a thorough picture of your risk, is to do penetration testing of those systems that you are authorized to do it on. So Stackware has a detailed guide on exactly how to do this. And uh, we make that available for free. If you're interested, just grab this hyperlink. I would say the, the bottom line here is to make sure that you're not just getting a PDF dropped off by the testers and then they disappear. And make sure that you can consume the information in a machine readable format, that it's clear about what the business impacts are, and that you get recommended mitigations from the team rather than just merely resolve this vulnerability, which I know a lot of penetration testing reports that I've seen often include. Moving on to evaluating the risk, likelihood, and severity. Whether you're doing kind of a tabletop or a mental exercise or you're doing penetration testing or both, you'll need a way to record the results of your findings and Stackware's artificial intelligence risk scoring system provides you a way to do that. I've got a detailed series of articles that lay out the entire methodology and it provides a quantitative way to express AI risk in dollar terms. If you're not quite ready for full quantitative risk management, I would recommend using an ordinal system, for example, priority number one through priority number 10, rather than doing high, medium, or low, because if you use the 
the latter version or latter system, basically all risks end up being medium and that doesn't make it that effective for prioritization. Okay, the next step to look at is evaluating the difficulty of fixing any of these risks that you've identified. Since the goal here is return on investment, understanding the impact to your organization of resolving a given issue is going to be key. So for example, do we need to rip out an open source library that's embedded in the product? If so, that's probably going to cause a lot of churn on the engineering side and make things challenging. So that's going to be a high impact fix. Some things that might be lower impact would be modifying a policy document, although you'll need to make sure that you train everyone on the changes to the policy. Otherwise, it's just going to be sitting on a shelf and no one's going to be using it in their daily operations. So evaluate how much effort you think something will take, and that will lead you to the final step, which is reporting out your results to stakeholders. So I would recommend that you always describe your proposed steps in terms of revenue generated or risk mitigated. This makes it very clear to business-minded stakeholders exactly what you're trying to do here and highlighting the fact that you understand that you're running a business and that the point of it is not to be secure, it's to deliver value to customers. And once you've done that, you can come up with recommendations for how to treat the risk. There are four options, transfer, mitigate, accept, and avoid. And it's best left to a business leader to make this call because they'll have all the information about the relevant circumstances, not just security, but also compliance, legal, uh, technical, competitive, market dynamics, all these things, they'll understand these dynamics. So I'd recommend leaving those decisions to them and then implementing them as they see fit. Okay, so that takes us to the end of the training. As you can see, these are the eight steps needed to conduct a StackAware style risk assessment of your AI security posture. And I've done this uh, multiple times already. I have a lot of experience at companies that are using AI and also helping companies protect their AI deployments. So again, feel free to use this for your own purposes. I encourage every organization to get the most out of this document. But if you want to hit the easy button, then that is definitely an option. And I absolutely would encourage you to do that. Basically, the way it works with Stackware is that you give us a data dump, you let us interview the key stakeholders, and then also, if you're doing a penetration test, give access to the systems that you want evaluated. And then we turn around and 30 days later, after that information is delivered, we give you a comprehensive risk register. And then also, the one of the follow-on services we do is building out your governance program. We can do much more than just identifying the risks. We can actually help you build out the policies and procedures to implement them. So this is a very light lift offering for security teams. And also, we will only interact with you if that's what you want. We will um, help you make the case to your executive team about what decisions need to be made, what issues need to be prioritized. And the whole goal is to support the security team at our customers. That is our philosophy and that is how we operate. So if you are interested in a AI risk assessment, please reach out. You can book a call directly from this Google Doc, which is linked to in the comments. Or you can contact me on LinkedIn or shoot an email to info at stackware.com. All of those communication methods are fair game. And we definitely look forward to hearing from you and helping you map out the AI risk for your organization. Thanks a lot.